An API gateway is an important concept in microservice architecture. It forms an entry point for external clients or really anything that's not a part of your core microservice system. By watching this video, you will learn all the basic concepts of API gateway that you should know. So you're a backend developer and you've built an application with microservices, your awesome online shopping application. Now we have a handful of microservices that discover and talk to each other using service discovery. Uh, you have a catalog service that provides the product catalog, a shopping cart microservice, a search microservice, a user microservice. Everything is great. You're super happy with what you have going on in the server. Your application API is all ready and now you need to hand it over to a front-end dev team to write the UI client for it in HTML and JavaScript. So the front-end web developer comes to you and says, okay man, I need to build a catalog UI page. Is there an API for it? Sure, here is the catalog microservice. Just call it. It has REST APIs, you know? Okay, thanks man. And he goes off to build his UI catalog page. Sometime later, he comes to you again. Okay, man, I got the catalog info, that's all good, but now I also need to show the currently logged in user at the top of the page. I don't see that API. Where's that API at? Oh, that's a different microservice. Really? Yeah, you need to use this user microservice. Oh, okay, thanks, man. And he goes off to show the currently logged in user on his page. And then he comes back again and says, Hey man, I also need to show the number of items in the card. Where's that API at? Oh, that's a completely different microservice. That's the shopping cart service. Are you kidding me, man? Mm, no. Okay, thanks, man. So he carefully builds his UI page and by the end of the day, he's called about 10 different microservices and said, are you kidding me, man? About 20 times and then the page is finally done and you deploy it to production. You have a team outing to celebrate. You come back to work to handle production issues and then you realize you should actually refactor your code. The user microservice should actually be split, ideally, into a user profile microservice and a session microservice. But hang on, the UI guy, yeah, he's using it. So you walk up to him and say, hey, listen, that user microservice you're calling, yeah, you need to update the API. Why? Because I'm refactoring the code. Here are two new microservices that you need to call now. Are you kidding me, man? What the Okay, so if you stop and think about what you did wrong, it basically boils down to a very simple concept in computer science. You need it to build an abstraction layer. There's no reason for the UI guy to know all the details of each and every microservice that you have in the backend. Imagine standing up a simple abstraction service that acts as a facade. It does nothing on its own really, except that it routes the requests and responses made by anyone outside your microservice system. And this abstraction layer is all that they need to be worried about. You give this information to the UX guy and you're done. The subtraction layer has all the APIs that you want to expose to the outside world. And when a request comes in, it knows which actual microservice to call. In that sense, this abstraction service acts as a traffic controller or a router. It forms a single entry point for all your microservices. If you do this, you're now free to split your backend into as many microservices as you like or refactor them as many times as you like, and you have them communicate with each other internally however you like. As long as you retain the contract of this facade service, everyone accessing your APIs from outside don't even need to know what you're doing within. This facade layer, ladies and gentlemen, is what's called an API gateway. It's as simple as that, it's a gateway. It sits at the very edge of your microservice architecture diagrams. And as a result, it's sometimes referred to as an edge microservice. When people are referring to something as an edge microservice, this is what they're referring to. So given a microservice system, what do you need to do to introduce an API gateway into the picture? First, you need to identify what your external API is going to be. Every microservice in your system has REST APIs of their own, but you obviously don't want all of them to be accessible to the outside world. What are the APIs that you are okay with other people calling? What is that contract going to look like? Identify that first, design and craft that API. Then 
you bring in this microservice that will act as a gateway. You can either write your own or use one of the available technologies. There's really nothing special to this. You're basically creating a bunch of APIs in accordance to this public API that you've decided to expose. But all it does internally is call one of your existing microservices and pass along the response. This technique is also called API composition, right? You're composing an API out of other existing APIs. Okay, so is that it for the API gateway? Well, it can be, but here's the thing. Since you now have the single point of entry that all your requests need to go through, there are a bunch of other things that you can do to take advantage of it. For example, you can add some kind of a monitoring system that measures how many requests are coming in, how long they're taking, and all that stuff. This is great for operations and support teams. You can authenticate users here. You can pass security tokens like JWT. You can implement security measures and prevent stuff like handling denial of service attacks, prevent access to certain users and IPs and a whole lot more. Now, if you end up needing to do all this other stuff, then you probably wanna avoid writing your own API gateway and look at one of the existing technologies. There are a bunch of options to choose from. One popular option is the open source API gateway implementation from the Netflix microservice stack. It's called Zool. You download and configure Zool and you run it wherever you run your microservices and there's your API gateway. There are other options, including hosted implementations by Nginx and AWS. No matter which one you choose, the patterns are pretty much the same as what we discussed. Now, the obvious next question. What are the disadvantages of using the API gateway pattern and how do you remediate them? First, obvious disadvantage. You've added a network hop here. So things are going to be a little bit slow, period. There's really nothing you can do about it since the pattern kind of requires it. Second disadvantage, let me ask you. How many of these API gateways do you need? Do you just create one? Well, one could be a problem. You build microservices with fault tolerance and redundancy in mind so that even if some of these instances were to go down, the system will still function. Now, what if your one API gateway goes down? Since it's a single entry point, your whole system goes down as a result. That's not good. So yeah, you can create multiple API gateways and split your incoming calls to them using stuff like load balancers and elastic IPs. The other problem with API Gateway is that it can technically get a little too complicated. So let's say you have a web client for your microservices and uh, you have an iOS client team and an Android team. They might need different APIs and different gateway configurations. In that case, rather than overcomplicate the single API Gateway, you can create multiple types of API Gateways, one for each client type and you can have those clients call the right API gateway or configure load balancers that route requests to the right API gateway. Some people call this pattern the backend for frontend. You're creating separate backend endpoints for the frontend that's calling it. So that's the API gateway in a nutshell. To wrap up our story, what you need to do is simple. Go to your frontend developer and tell him to use your API gateway as the one endpoint that he needs to call. Listen to a couple of are you kidding me's from him and then once he refactors all his code to call your gateway, you are now free to do whatever you like in your microservice architecture as long as you retain this external API contract. Problem solved and thanks for watching. <laughs>